been using a while. We're going to try to piece it back together. Got this guy. <laughs> I can't stick around for the Comedy Central show. Somebody's going to go, why is he following me? <laughs> this is literally behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking your job. Hey, I love it. I'm training. I'm Jason giving. works a lot. If you want to see what that camera's recording, you have to go to his channel and find out. All right, everyone, so the audio got messed up on two or three of these clips, so I'm going to voice over when I can. I'll save the ones that aren't too bad, and uh, we'll just we'll make do with what we got. But basically, uh, me and Aaron here, the man behind the scenes, are getting ready to start on line boring the boom on Mike's John Deere 120. Um, and here you can see all of our math that we've done. We basically measured the outside diameter of that pin. And it measured the inside diameter of the factory bushing to get the factory running clearance. And basically what we're going to do is it's right there. It's like 2.973. Um, we're going to bore out this hole here to be exactly the same as that bushing. So we maintain the same running clearance. Here you can see the um, homemade kind of line boring setup that we're, we're using. Mike borrowed it. Um, I'll tell you, it worked pretty good for what it was. It took us a long time to kind of write our own instruction manual, if that makes sense. But um, after the first two pins, I would say that, well, actually, after this first pin, I would say we really started to get some steam on it, and uh, we were getting some good results with it, so we were happy with it. But um, basically, this is just me and Aaron bantering back and forth, making fun of Mike, and in the next one, we do a little bit more, and, and then we start kind of getting into it. We can say this on my channel, but I don't know about their perfect channel. But uh, we're having a little problem here. Our shaft, though it fits very snugly in the hole, is not long enough for the hole. Right. So uh, here's the problem is we got to put our support bearings on each side of this, and it's not quite long enough to get a support bearing on that side uh, because we're going to have to switch it around. So we're going to have to uh, tag team polish, in this, polish this shaft here, aren't we? Yes, we are. This is going to be uh, this is going to be. A, Handy job we got here going on. So we got to make sure that this looks like this so that the bearing is free on there, which we stuck the bearing on there and it won't go very far. So we got to make this one. Make it look good like me, yeah, right? Yeah, just like you. Okay. Yeah. So it's got to slide in and out of that hole with as little friction as possible. Exactly. Yes. That's the way we always want it. Right. Okay. And if we have to, we'll lube it up. And we may have to. Yeah. But I guess we're going to get going on this now. Here we go. <laughs> Alright guys, so here we are mounting the side plates and bearing support carriers or whatever you really want to call them. They're a uh, three quarter inch plate, they're pretty heavy, and we found some inch and a half um, square tube in the scrap bin that's, I'm going to say eighth inch wall thickness. Uh, we used three pieces per side and welded them straight to the boom as you can see here. And basically what this did was space the bearing carrier far enough away from the uh, bore here that Aaron was able to get the mid gun in and fill the bore with weld because basically the process here is you need to center the boring bar in the existing hole um, as best you can you know it's going to be oblonged but you need to center that up plumb and square on both sides so that that bore is or that bore bar is running true through the hole and then once you have that established you fill the 
the existing bore in with a layer of weld and then you put your machining tool in the boring bar and run the bar through and cut it true and straight to the desired size. I hope that makes sense. Um, so the most important thing here is that these bearings are mounted very rigidly to the boom and that they won't lose their position um, when we take the bore in and out a few times and as we're cutting, which you'll see in a little bit, there's a tremendous amount of um, side load on this bar from the cutting tool doing its job. It actually shakes the boom quite a bit, and that's one of the things that we learned is that we were going too fast with the cutting tool, which we basically followed the instructions of the owner of this machine. Um, he wasn't able to be present, but he kind of gave Aaron and Mike a crash course into it. And uh, we had found some things that we disagree with. We're not sure if, if he's wrong or if we just understood him incorrectly, which is honestly probably the case. But uh, he had told us to run the drill wide open, you know, RPM. And after doing some quick research and just kind of Aaron and I putting our heads together, we realized that uh, the most, the fastest you really want to cut at is about 100 RPM. So after we kind of did all that, we, re we lost all of our... Um, chip chatter or our tool tip chattering problems and we were able to get a really nice clean cut um, which we're very happy with and but yeah either way um, getting off topic here the most important part about this to realize is that this three quarter inch plate needs to be mounted as solidly to the workpiece as possible and even with these three pieces of square tube holding it on there we had a little bit of deflection running it um, so it really could have been mounted better. And in another video, you'll see how we did the boring on the quick coupler where we actually attached the three quarter plate to a piece of half inch plate directly to Mike's welding table. And then we welded the coupler straight to that plate as well. And that entire setup was probably the best that we did the entire time. It was very rigid. It had a really nice, uh, almost mirror finish when it was, when we did the final cut on it. So, um, the name of the game here is, you know, make sure you do your setup properly and make sure that you kind of think this through and accept or understand the fact of the cutting load that you're going to be placing on these plates. But, um, so that's basically what you're seeing here. So you can see here what I was saying earlier, this is Aaron, AKA the man behind the scenes, AKA Dirk Better Than Perfect. Um, and he's basically welding in the pin board um, and undersizing it essentially so that we can cut it to the right size and it'll be a perfect circle at that point. Um, some line boring setups would have this automated it would be like a MIG attachment, usually goes on a suitcase welder, and it'll do the speed and feed and everything for you, and you kind of just hit go and turn it loose. Um, I would not advise some type of a novice to do this um, without that kind of setup, if that makes sense. Uh, something I don't think most people know about Man Behind the Scenes is he's actually a uh, professional welder by trade without getting into his life too much, but he's got over 30,000 hours um, behind a welding helmet and he is extremely talented at this kind of stuff and that's why he's able to do this uh, and it was even quite difficult for him in some places so if you're thinking about doing this kind of thing I would spend the extra money and I would get the automated make feeders um, they're like a thousand dollars on eBay and they would be well worth it but uh, basically that's all he's doing here and then he goes over and does the other side and then we start the painfully slow process of cutting it back round and true.
I guess it's worth mentioning that the uh, man behind the scenes was welding up doing the fun job. I was tasked with measuring every single hole on the main boom and the stick and the coupler and the H beams. Um, basically measuring them for true in two different directions, um, north, south, and east, west, and then uh, measured them for being a conical shape so i measured at the very beginning of it and i measured the very back of the boss uh two different positions recorded this all down then measured that against the outside diameter of the bushing and made sure that we still had a press fit um this was a very long process i hate using t gauges like this um but you know i don't have an inside micrometer um to use so this worked out well uh but basically most of these holes were actually they still pass just barely, but uh, talking to Mike and th and uh, Aaron about it, we basically decided that they were good enough. Um, they were like a 1,000th press fit, uh, and we would probably like to see a 2.5 to 3,000th press fit. But um, we weren't going to go through the process of welding them up and setting the boring machine up and, and doing all that, making this into a you know two-week process of just line boring or a week and a half process of just line boring because each hole realistically took us about a day from start to finish um, so what you see is me using the T gauges to basically measure it out and then using the dial caliper to measure the T gauge and recording my, um, my, my measurement down and basically I went through and measured the same position three times to make sure that I got the accurate measurement because if you hold the T gauge uh, off kilter a little bit you're not going to get the exact um, accurate measurement and that's why I don't like them but yeah this is basically what I had to do the whole day all right so the master uh, welder himself dirt better than perfect that's right got these all filled in so you filled the holes nicely yes I you're, good at, you're good at filling them holes make it as tight as we can that's right Hey, what about that chocolate chip cookie from uh, Derby Market? Oh, that was amazing. Oh, man. I think, Boy. do we just want to call it quits for today? Or? Oh, just about. Uh oh, boss is here Oh, now. boss is back. Maybe oh, not. back to work. <laughs> All right, Jason fans, you got the man behind the scenes with Dirt Perfect. Uh, what we're going to do is watch this guy. Usually I'm a better welder than what I did here, but I had all this in my way when I welded these up. So there's gonna be a couple high spots. That's what he's doing right now is he's knocking down my high spots and then we, we should be ready to go. Uh, I don't think you're getting an excuse today. You're the man in charge. The other one's out doing paperwork. Okay. All right. You're better off. Hey. No one can boss us around, no zero. Now, we already know that I'm better looking than Michael, the third perfect, but now who's better looking, the man behind the scene or Jason Works a lot? All right, the man gets stuff done right now. Yeah, how you doing? quite a bit uh, I mean I didn't think you were gonna be this good yeah I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I needed some good help in shop yeah I can imagine all right guys we'll catch up with you later
right, YouTube, me and uh, dirt better than perfect. We got one one side finished here. Um, it's all pretty and stuff. It seemed like everything was going real fast, but it was just me and you in, and then it just like... I know. You know, Mike came in, and then it, it, it just got yeah. to... I mean, everything kind of got chaotic there for a while. And right. Like, now I, tell I think you. we're going back on the right track. You just Sometimes you just got to leave two guys alone to play with their shaft. Exactly. They'll bore the holes Shove out. Back and forth. Right, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Lubricate it real yeah. good. Sometimes three is too many. Yes. So what uh what Dirt Better Than Perfect's doing here is he's uh he's knocking some of the, the high spots down. And of course we ain't yeah. got the room for it to fit, so Yeah, so you see what we have to do here. And um are you getting paid for this? <sighs> yeah, me neither. Imagine that. I'll may tell get you. a may get a good tip. Yeah, I like don't eat yellow snow or something like that, but yeah. Yeah. Stay in school. Yeah. Yeah. Eat, eat your vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Yeah. But, uh, see ya. Yeah. Where after high school, I was one of them guys that thought I was too cool for school, you know? Yeah. You and, know, and I'll tell you what, I still think I'm too cool for school, but maybe yeah, that's just a testament to me not being too smart. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get the high spots knocked out of this so we don't have to do so much work with the, uh, the cutting tool here and uh in the boring bar and and we'll uh we'll bring you back when we start boring what do you think michael's gonna feed us do you think he's gonna feed us anything well the girls went and got us milkshakes i think that's probably about all we're gonna get if it's yeah probably right yeah oh well we'll work for milkshake right that's right here we go all right guys so what you're about to see is uh the last clip i have of this day and it's where we kind of figured out the proper rpm we still get a little bit of chatter from the cup being too deep but we're definitely making progress. And uh, after that clip runs out, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, we have a decent amount of clips from the end of the main boom slash the stick connection. They'll be in the next video. We've got a whole bunch of shenanigans of going behind the scenes. Uh, we actually got Dirt Perfect in trouble with the HR department. We have that on video. So there's going to be quite a bit from um, our trip out to Derby. And I don't want to overwhelm it with this one. Um, also, I may or may not have forgotten to get a video of the finished product. But I promise that's not the whole reason that I'm ending the video here. Uh, I know Mike has good footage on his. You'll probably see that coming up um, in the future when he releases the video. And uh, yeah, so in the meantime, I thank you for watching along. If you've got questions or comments, post them down below. I'll get back to you. And uh, really, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.